Welcome everyone to the, um, the mini lecture on jellyfish stings and envenomations. So this is week 11 and we've covered the first three uh, learning objectives in the main lecture and then we have a mini lecture. This one is going to be on jellyfish um, stings, particularly the irukandji and the box jellyfish. So let's start with case one. This is Irene. Irene's a 67-year-old tourist from Ireland. She's traveling around Australia in her caravan with her husband. She comes to Townsville and goes for a little swim in the, in the beach at the Strand. And um, she sits back down on the beach on a towel next to her husband and sips, uh, I don't know, a drink, a martini or something. And then um, enjoying the sun. And then 30 minutes later, she starts feeling really nauseated. She starts vomiting and gets severe chest and arm pain. She gets short of breath, sweating, headache, um, chest pain, and she's uh, on warfarin for a previous aortic valve replacement. So she calls an ambulance, they come to hospital. In the hospital, she's agitated, restless, she's trying to walk around, her whole body is in pain. Uh, she's holding her head, she's tachycardic, and her blood pressure is over 200 systolic. Um, she's short of breath, actively vomiting, but looking at her skin, there's not a scratch or a bite on her. Listening to her chest, she's got inspiratory crackles in both lung fields. So we do some investigations, and she's got some ST depression laterally, which is a sign of cardiac um, ischemia. And we do a troponin, which comes back positive. So she's had a, a, a non-STEMI, a non-ST elevation MI. CT head shows no bleed, and she's got some fluid in the lungs on the x-ray, some pulmonary edema. So she's got delayed onset of pain, no bite marks, severe muscle spasms, positive troponin, and pulmonary edema. Could she have had just a bad heart attack? Well, possibly, but this is an envenomation talk. So what could have stung or bitten Irene? This is Irukandji syndrome. And this is the jellyfish called Karukia barnesi. So Irukandji syndrome was named after the Irukandji Aboriginal tribe that lives up here in Palm Cove, which is about 20 minutes north of Cairns. So Townsville is down, way down this way. Um, and the syndrome was actually described before the jellyfish had been discovered. So this is Dr. Jack Barnes, 1964, who described Irukandji syndrome. Subjects were seized with remarkable restlessness and were in constant movement, movement, stamping about aimlessly, winging their wings, flexing and extending their bodies, and generally twisting and writhing. Muscle groups and tonic contraction, little short of spasm, and the volunteers adopted a stance which I can best liken to that of an infant with a full nappy, just like this little baby right here. All had abdominal and back pain, Pain in the anterior chest wall with some difficulty in breathing and diffuse aches in muscles and joints. So this is Dr. Jack Barnes over here. Um, so he went on a mission trying to find this little jellyfish. So he lay on the seabed with his snorkel and goggles, I assume, for six days looking for a possible jellyfish that ex caused this, this syndrome. He found two little jellyfish which he thought were the culprits. He rubbed the tentacles on himself his nine-year-old son and the lifeguard uh, on, on duty, and nothing happened until 45 minutes later. All three were suffering from severe abdominal pain, vomiting, restlessness, and muscle spasms, and all three were admitted to Cairns Base Hospital. Eureka! Jack Barnes had discovered the um, Karukiai Barnesi jellyfish. So this is Irukandji syndrome in summary. It's a triad of delayed onset of symptoms, no skin markings, and a massive sympathetic surge from rapid catecholamine release, which results in hypertension, pulmonary edema, and the main cause of death is by intracranial hemorrhage. So you can have a slow, painful death. So what do we do with Irukandji? You apply vinegar, and that inactivates uh, tentacles. Stinger nets don't help because the irukandji are too small. So they don't tell you that on the signs at the strand where they have the net. 
uh, stinger nets up. Resuscitation. Um, now, there's actually only been two documented deaths from irukandji. That was in 2002, and both were from intracranial bleeds. So although it, it causes severe pain, it rarely causes um, death. If the patient's got signs of envenomation, then you can give antivenom. No, wait. There is no antivenom for irukandji. So this is the only envenomation um, case out of all the snake bites, spider bites, and other jellyfish, this is the only one that has no antivenom. So what you can give instead is magnesium, GTN for hypertension, and opiates for pain. And always call for help. Now this is a little diagram explaining how the tentacles and vinegar work. So if you look at this diagram, this is your, the tentacles of your jellyfish. And if you zoom in here, there's a little cell. This is called your nematocyst. And the nematocyst holds this little harpoon device inside, which is where the venom is stored. And there's a little trigger here that when the tentacles come in contact with another creature, the trigger gets, um, well, triggered. And this big harpoon comes flying out and attaches itself to the prey, releasing venom into the, the prey. So this is an electron micrograph of the harpoon as it is coming out of the nematocyst. And these are the little triggers that are there on the surface of the tentacle. So um, what they found was vinegar changed the pH of the surface of the tentacle and prevented this trigger from being activated. And that's how vinegar works. So what happened to Irene? She was given vinegar. Um, she had a GTN infusion for blood pressure, gave, given some magnesium and IV opiates and a bit of um, BiPAP for her pulmonary edema, some positive pressure ventilation. And she went to ICU but um, was discharged a few days later. Okay, case two. This is Brock. Brock is a 17-year-old male. He was on Fraser Island for Christmas uh, with his family on a beach camping. So this is based on a real patient that I saw when I was doing retrieval. So we actually went out and picked up this boy um, on the helicopter uh, out on Fraser Island. So Brock was swimming in the waves with his cousin and immediately felt a burning pain in his right leg. He was screaming in pain and came back onto the beach and collapsed in front of his family. So he had a brief loss of consciousness but was now awake, a little bit confused and, and, and screaming in pain. His right leg showed a cross-hatched lace-like erythematous rash. And when we did his blood pressure, he had a lying standing drop, so a postural drop uh, in his blood pressure. So this is his leg, a cross-hatched lace-like erythematous rash. So he's got immediate pain, visible lace-like marks, hypotension with a postural drop and a collapse. So what could have uh, stung or bitten Brock? Well, this is classic box jellyfish envenomation. So it's called the box jellyfish because it has four sides with a group of tentacles coming from each corner. The tentacles can be up to three meters in length. And this was discovered by another Queenslander, Dr. Hugo Flecker. Um, he named the jellyfish Chironex fleckeri. Chiro means hand or tentacle. Nex means murderer and flicker eyes is named after himself. So the venom from these tentacles causes um, pores of calcium channels. So it creates an opening in the cell wall that allows calcium to enter. Um, and this causes sudden cardiac arrhythmias and arrest and severe hypotension and tachycardia. So the triad of symptoms, it's there's obvious skin markings. So that's different from irukandji where there's no markings. You get immediate pain and sudden collapse. Um, and death, if you're going to die, you're usually dead within the first five minutes. So there's been about 70 deaths, and 12, the last 12 have been children, which have died, unfortunately, in the, la in, the, in the first five minutes. So if you survive the hospital, then you will likely survive the whole um, experience. So what do we do with jellyfish, uh, box jellyfish? Again, vinegar, stinger nets are a prevention. You might need prolonged CPR if, 
if there is a cardiac arrest. Envenomation, again, immediate symptoms, skin marks and collapse. Now, there is an antivenom, so uh, if you get to hospital in time, then administering antivenom can be life-saving. Um, or ideally, you'd administer it on the scene at the beach where the patient has collapsed. So, what happened to Brock? Well, he got first aid treatment with vinegar. He was given some antivenom, um, mainly because of pain, because he had some opiates and his pain. He had, uh, we gave him some fentanyl and he still had quite severe pain. Um, so he got some antivenom, uh, plus because of his postural blood pressure drop was another indication for his antivenom. Um, but yeah, he made a good recovery. So in summary, Irukandji syndrome is delayed pain, no skin markings, pain everywhere, and a sympathetic surge. Whereas box jellyfish, you get immediate severe pain, obvious skin markings, and rapid death from calcium channel formation. Um, there's no antivenom for Irukandji, but box jellyfish has got antivenom. Well, that's the end of the mini lecture. I hope you found that interesting.